Welcome back to part two of perhaps the most controversial and honest After Hours with Richter ever. This is epic, people. This is why we are the number one Bigfoot webcast, because we bring it all to the table. Hoaxers, scientists, real scientists, celebrities, everything. That's why we've got Rick Dyer here today. Welcome, Rick Dyer. Déjame en paz, coño. Welcome to After Hours. My name is Richter. I am your host. Richter! What? Leave him alone! It's Judgment Day for Sasquatch. Thanks for driving me like a stud. Now we got Richter going. We're going to have to hear it about it all night. Yeah. <laughs> that's a bunch of screaming meanies out there, and that's the scoop that has been reported so far. By your opinion that you are no kill, you are dooming the species to be extinct. Well, when you don't believe in Bigfoot, everything you see that might be one is something else. We thought that we had the holy grail of DNA. When are we going to make a video, Richter? And I mean not an X-rated one. Dr. Todd, you've also been called the scoff dick. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> you can't talk about I can't! Hello? Is this thing on? Am I muted? Can you hear me? Hey, Richter, I've got a question for you. How does it feel to lose Bigfoot Bounty? Hmm. My question is, why do you think Bigfoot is real? Well, well the thing is, uh, Richter, uh, back when you were talking about people intimidating people not to like somebody, uh, that that is what happens with uh, people like Tim Fasano. Uh, Tim Fasano, man, we we go way back, way back. He is a really good guy. When 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 my motorhome burnt up, he was the first one there. He was the only one that came down down there to see if my family was okay. Drove three hours. He is a really good guy. Um, but when people say, oh, my God, uh, you, you don't associate with this guy or you don't associate with that guy, it's, it's really easy for a, a person with a, a weak mind to, to tell the people, no, oh, this is going to hurt your career. But the thing is, Rick, Rick Dyer has, hasn't hurt no one's career. Rick Dyer has made people's career. You acknowledge that haters make you famous. That's true, but some say Randy has done a service to the Bigfoot community by providing a place of keeping track of your perceived scams. Yet he is and has made money off of you by selling t-shirts at your expense. I saw this yesterday when I visited his blog. How much of a cut do you get off of that? I mean, is there a business arrangement between the two of you? Because there should be. It would be classic Bigfootery. If you two were covertly working together, like you confessed to me that you were working with Michael Merchant, oh, yeah. then this could happen with even someone like Randy Filipovic, and no one would know about that. And you know what? This wouldn't surprise me. So are you getting a cut of those T-shirts? I am not getting the cut of that T-shirts, but this man has made me so much money, he can have that. <laughs> well, that that is very good of you. Let Randy make money off of those T-shirts. Yeah. Okay, I don't know Randy at all. I can't even really consider him or call him a friend. He has never called me on the telephone. I don't know him from Adam. Gosh, he considers me his friend. How? Why? I, I, I mean, we haven't had any long, in-depth conversations about Rick Dyer or about Bigfoot. We really don't... I don't know him, you know? God, this earphone. This, I can tell you this. He's got a really sweet pendant from SweetSassyGlassy.com. Did he buy that from you? No. Someone bought it for him as a gift. Okay. Anyway, you can understand, Rick, that I, I can assume, as a critical thinker, that because of your working relationship with Michael Merchant in the early Team Taser days, that you have a working relationship right now with Randy. I mean, it's... Good cop, bad cop planning. Uh, you could, you can understand why I would assume that. Oh yes, yes, and that's the way it looks. But um, we do not have any 
a relationship going, period. Now, if we were working together, I wouldn't tell you that anyway. <laughs> but So, Rick, your Google Hangouts were, for all intents and purposes, the show. And then people would go to the BigfootTrackerNews.blogspot.com website for the after-show discussion. It's like you're the walking dead, and then Randy's blog would be the, the talking dead. Now, people would go there, and they would be discussing viewpoints, theories, and predictions on all the latest developments of your hoax. Okay, now, do you see why I think that you two gentlemen are working together on this? As an outsider and a critical thinker, I can't help but wonder that. But, you, would, uh, you would deny it. Yeah, yeah. I would, de I would definitely deny it. But as far as myself and and uh, Michael Merchant, um, people just don't understand. The early Team Taser days, the early Michael Merchant days, every fight that we had, everything was planned 100%. Everything, everything. <gasps> Atomic big fight, and we're going to kill one, and we're going to put it on ice. And some tens. Here, Bigfoot, Bigfoot, Bigfoot. I got a treat for you. As far I'm not surprised. Are you surprised, Tammy? I'm not surprised. No. Nothing surprises me about Michael Merchant. I believe the man is a fraud. He is phony baloney. He will say and do anything to get on TV. He will destroy all his personal relationships out of paranoia. He has driven away everyone and anyone, including Rick Dyer, who he was working with, who has ever supported him or worked with him. I liked him a lot, a great deal. Yet all that backstabbing and micromanaging by that Dejame en paz, coño. ruined Team Taser. Team Taser was a great thing. No, for real, Rick. You know, that woman ruined Team Taser. She pushed me and Tammy away when we had Dr. Meldrum on our show. When After Hours of Team Taser was starting to get more attention than Michael Merchant, <gasps> what happened to me and Tammy? Tammy, what happened to us? We were banished. Yeah. So we went on and did our own thing. And then what happened with um, Michael Merchant and Phil Poling? They had been friends for years. Jealousy and paranoia and backstabbing by that Dejame en paz, coño. ruined that relationship. And then Sean Evidence and Rosa Hebe backed and pulled away from Michael Merchant. Michael Merchant's views on YouTube have gone down the fucking toilet because he's burned his bridge with Sean Evidence. He gets maybe 300 views now if he's lucky. His, his videos are all the same. He's always ranting and accusing people, and his ego is really this big. And he is so paranoid and insecure. He is the biggest joke. I have not been probed by aliens that I'm aware of. And I'm damn sure I never had the conversation with, with Richter. Because you guys are like this, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, like, just, just, just <laughs> inseparable. Just like that. Like yin and yang. Like, kind of like Satan and God. Richter's absolutely right. I don't believe in Bigfoot. Hone your craft, Michael Merchant. Quit promoting hoaxers. Oh, wait. That's what he does. Never mind. Well, continue promoting hoaxers because you're failing. You have failed. Rick Dyer is the winner here. You're not. You're the biggest loser of the Bigfoot community. I'm probably going to get spanked for this. It's the truth. Put down the bong and prove me wrong. That goes for you too, Michael Merchant. That's not just for Jeffrey Kelly. Tammy, you're laughing. I'm, I'm you're serious. I love it. I love it. Well, okay, well, that's Tell us what you really feel. That leads me to something else, Richter and Rick. What about expeditions? Rick Dyer, you do Bigfoot expeditions, and I hear rumors that they're a lot of fun, entertaining, adventure, all of the things that you want when you go on a Bigfoot expedition. Uh, you do these for money, right? That's correct, and uh, the Bigfoot expeditions have been a big part of my life, and everyone that has went on an expedition has came back really even the person that had the heart attack he came back and said he was you know it was an excellent expedition even though he stayed in the hospital and then when I fired him then he started to talk crap Bigfoot Sasquatch back in the woods Bigfoot Yeti in your neighborhood oh! Oh! Bigfoot Scott is he beast no man 
Justin's happy and his life is good. Doing hoaxes like a hoaxer should. Roasting his bear meat on a stick. He got fucked in the ass by a bear with a dick. Cause we're living here in Bigfoot Town. You can find the footprints that won't fit a song. Crying in the night. is on. Well, Tom, he should be up here with us right now. I mean, uh, he. He wanted to come, flew clear out here and all that stuff, and, uh, and he act like he's interested in Bigfoot, but yeah, he's down here in the lady's tent. Oh, you see, you might hear a grunt, some knocking on some trees, Bigfoot Sasquatch back in the woods, Bigfoot Yeti. Did you think uh, before you came that this expedition was going to be easier? I, be I believed you. I thought it would be a good hike. And I haven't done anything in six months, so I knew it was going to be hard. And this is a steep hill. I've done a lot of mountain climbing, and this is a steep hill. <laughs> but but, but it's, it's, my expeditions are really fun. We really go deep in the woods. We don't have no base camp. You can't look for Bigfoot with a base camp. We, we go deep in the woods, and they're all over the Internet. Now, my expeditions are so f fun. In uh, 2009, I had an expedition to Thailand, and us 10 got to know each other real well and had so much fun because we were going to say, well, we're going to spend two nights in Bangkok, and then eight nights in the Thailand bush. And uh, we got along so well, we didn't even go hunt for Bigfoot. We stayed in Bangkok for 10 days. So, <laughs> so, so it's, it's, it's crazy, y'all. It's, 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 it's crazy, and that's why my expeditions are the absolute best. And the next time I have one, y'all two are invited for free, just so y'all can see. I don't know if y'all gonna take me up on that, but hey, I'm putting it out there. Randy Filipovic, you are invited. Everybody oh, in the Oh, that'd be great, Randy. Seriously, seriously, Randy, that could be a good thing for you to put down the hatchet. I will bury the hatchet. I will bury the hatchet. Him down. I will use my dime. But to then some people, down. okay, I can see it, but I'm, I'm hearing voices in my head right now. All these people in the Bigfoot community saying, oh no, look what he did to Steve Coles. Steve Coles was afraid for his life. La, 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 la. What? 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 <laughs> what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. So people would say that, oh no, he can't be trusted. He's out to hurt you. I can just, that's what That's what, That's what. what I'm hearing right now from all these, the Bigfoot community. La, 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 la. I have seven kids, one on the way. And I have, I, I'm not out here to hurt nobody. I've got a life, y'all. I don't live in my mom's basement. I have a beautiful wife. I, I have a house. I have bills. I have everything that a normal person has. I, I'm not here to hurt no one. If This guy named Vegas Rob, he came out and took pictures of my wife and stuff and two pictures of me and only came out when he knew that I wasn't there okay and luckily I got his tag number. well my wife took a picture of his tag number and then we got his name and then when we got his name guess what man I am so sorry I'm so sorry things got out of hand I just got wrapped up in stuff I am sorry and I have all this on tape and it's on my YouTube channel right now if y'all want to see you know uh, apologizing and this was a big hater that that came out to my house and took pictures and then and stuff and I forgave him I forgive everybody just forgive me please 
if I hurt you in any way, I, I am sorry. I just want to get past this and move on. I will pay for Randy's flight first class from Canada to come out on an expedition with me. Bring whoever you want to. Uh, invite whoever you want to. I will pay for it. I will facilitate this. I'm not a bad guy like he thinks I am. And, and I'm offering this to him. And I'm offering my apologies to whoever I may have hurt. Well, let me ask you this, Rick. On your expeditions, um, I'm, uh, recently it's come out by former BFRO people that the BFRO expeditions are uh, have faked uh, activity. Uh, you know that anytime you go on a BFRO expedition, you're going to have some kind of a Bigfoot encounter. Okay, is that going to happen on your Bigfoot expeditions? How are your expeditions different from the BFRO expeditions? Why is what you do different? Because we really go out. We don't have base camps, folks. We really go out. We go out deep in the woods. We don't need to make up fake encounters because our expeditions are fun. Everybody gets along. Everybody's having a good time. You know, there's nothing like sitting around a fire in the middle of the woods talking about Bigfoot, talking about yourself. It's, it's just a great, great experience. And that's what makes our expeditions different than everyone else because we actually really do it. And, and we really go deep, really deep in the woods. You're laughing, Richard, when I said really deep. Why? <laughs> His mind wonders. <laughs> we have got a shock of a lifetime, bro. A shock of a lifetime. I pull up and I saw Vegas Rob. And I got out with bad intentions. But then as soon as I got out, he came up and he said he wanted to apologize. He, he still don't believe that it is a real Bigfoot. But that's okay. Uh, everybody has their own opinions, but but the thing is, he did come and apologize to me, so so I have to give him credit. And uh, and this is <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it's kind of crazy, uh, mm. but hey, uh, there it is. Have anything to say? Yeah, I just want to say that. Um... I got a little carried away. Now, just to make sure everybody knows, I never photographed his children, but I did get a little get caught up. I went to the apartment and I wanted to see if he was, you know, really there. Went to his house. And I just kind of wanted to meet the guy. I thought this guy is pretty charismatic. He, he, uh, you know, is claiming these these claims. And yeah, you know, I got caught up. And I thought, well, I'm just gonna go up, and knock on his door, and ask him about one of the vehicles, and uh, just kind of get to get to meet him and just kind of see what he's like in person. But um, I, 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 I took it too far. You know, I didn't need to go to the apartment and, and I didn't need to come here. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. And all that is in the past. And, and, and it took a man to come up here and face me. It took a man. And, and he did apologize. So I'm cool with this. And everything is done and over with. Rick Dyer, Team Tracker, baby. Rick Dyer, earlier you mentioned your customers, people coming to view your uh, body in the trailer. Customers. Oh, Tammy, yes. he said the word customers. Yes. As a P.T. Barnum type of a person, he is providing a sideshow act where people, it's kind of like that, like the Minnesota Iceman. People went to that, paid for it. Can you imagine if Facebook was around back then in the 70s? It, it was an awesome experience, and the kids left with s such enthusiasm. Their parents was happy. Most of the parents did not even go in. They knew what was up. They knew what was up. The, the, the news was advertising it as a sideshow. 
Someone said that it seems counterproductive that there are people working hard to make sure that the piece of shit is exposed for the liar, hoaxer, fraud that he is. Now he's given a platform to baffle everyone and anyone who will listen with his bullshit. Okay, last I checked, this country, and I'm defending Rick Dyer right now, you people, you Bigfoot, you Bigfoot people out there, you Bigfoot community are making me defend this man. Last I checked, this country was based on freedom of speech. You can't baffle someone already who's a known hoaxer. You know who he is, and you still choose to be part of the discussion without even talking to him. Don't be a hypocrite. Bigfoot community, stop being a hypocrite. Stop. It's easy. I am. I have, I've stopped being a hypocrite. I have Rick Dyer on my show. Tammy, are you happy you're no longer a hypocrite? Yes, very happy. And I do have a, uh, a final opinion about all of that. No one is ever going to prove the existence of a species by playing on Facebook. End of story. Period. That is all. <laughs> Another person wrote, Rick, we won't be able to go on with a serious investigation in the future because the hoaxers has got the media making a big fat joke of us. Okay, like what Tammy said, Bigfoot will never be found as long as all of you are nose deep in your keyboards and not in the Pacific Northwest. Um, Don Boucher, I hope I'm saying his name right, said in Coalition, quote, Rick said he wanted to destroy the community. I think he's doing a fine job since we let him. Mm. Actually, the Bigfoot community, no, I'm going to speak for you, Rick. And here I am having to speak for you. God. This started back in 1967, and people still say that the Patterson-Gimlin film is a man in a suit. That is nothing new. Joe Rogan makes fun of us Bigfoot people in his stand-up routine, and it is deserved, hands down. The whole world thinks we're insane because we think this relic hominid is real. Well, at least me and Tammy do. Uh, people like Rick Dyer see money to be made in hoaxing and is capitalizing on where the world is on the world's position on Bigfoot. Yet here we are, all complaining, well, someone like Rick Dyer gets on the news and makes his money all the way back to the bank. See the problem here? Stop bitching and start producing. If anything, Rick Dyer should motivate you people to go out in the woods and prove Bigfoot's real. Bring back solid evidence, because as of right now, January 14th, 2015, there is no hard proof of Bigfoot being real. It's all videos, blob squatches, he said, she said. I shot Bigfoot, he shot Bigfoot. Here's a gator arm in Florida. Oh, well, oh, we were played, or oh, whatever. Okay, so far, the best piece of evidence has been the Patterson-Gimlin film. And Bob Gimlin has been under scrutiny for so long over that. And yet, his character speaks volumes. I believe Bob Gimlin is telling the truth. And I am a part of the Gimlin Guard. And you want to know who the queen bitch of the Gimlin Guard is? It's Tammy Murray, right here. Tammy Murray was on the fence about Bob Gimlin and the story until she met him. And his character reached her heart. People's character is what makes them who they truly are. And if someone apologizes like Rick Dyer did to me, He's a good person. He's a good man in my world. You don't own my world. The Bigfoot community doesn't own my world. But if he makes good with me, that's between me and him. And does that make me a bad person? Are you going to equate Richter as a hoaxer? He's a supporter. Fuck you. You're not paying my bills. Déjame en paz, coño. You people have turned me into this asshole now. Fuck you and your precious Bigfoot Illuminati. I don't give a fuck about your Bigfoot groups. I'm Richter. I have a really awesome Bigfoot channel. People come to my shit and watch my videos. Yeah, they might say, call me a fag, cocksucker, wish death on me by AIDS. That's the Bigfoot community right there. And you know what? I don't give a fuck about the Bigfoot community. I do, have, I do care, however, about the Bigfoot research community. And there's a big difference between the research community and this online Facebook social media click lynch mob. Oh, Richter, you're going to get backlash, you and Tammy. This is your backlash right in your face, and you're watching me right now. Hopefully this pisses you off. 
to click off and not watch my show. You don't have to watch if you don't have to like what I'm saying. It's the truth. I happen to try to be a realist here. I have a hoaxer on my show. I had someone who has made books about Rick Dyer on my show. I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I'm not going to be like Jeff Kelly. I'm getting off on the tirade. Sorry, guys. Uh, I want to go over that you said that uh, Steve Calls was scared for his life. This is the first time I've ever heard that. That's what the Bigfoot community says, that when he came out to California, what was that whole story about? Oh, that, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Can I go over that? Sure. Yeah, form date, yeah. Uh, hey, Richter and Tammy is giving you the platform to speak. <laughs> uh, first, first of all, I, I would like to say that I have met Steve Gulls uh, on one occasion. He is a very, very nice guy. He is a very nice guy out of Bigfoot, but we do not click during Bigfoot, in the Bigfoot. We do not click. But uh, what happened was is... Uh, Steve Coles was calling me a liar, and I was, and he was like 100% liar this and liar that. You don't trust this guy. You don't do this. But when, and then I got with my group, and I said, look, he's saying all this, but the minute I offer him a trip to see a baby Bigfoot that ate a McDonald's hamburger, he would jump on a plane. And guess what? He did. And that was the whole story. That was just to prove that, hey, this guy really don't. What? What was the story about him being blindfolded? Huh? Yeah, I've heard Bigfoot community people saying that uh, he was in fear of his life, that he was blindfolded. I mean, no, well, he was never blindfolded. I never even saw him in California. He, uh, I, the joke was to to get them all the way out to California and just leave them in the airport, and which we did. Because he's, oh, this is not true. This is not true. Don't believe him, and don't believe him. And now he's not the only one. He flew, and another guy drove from Texas to Los Angeles to see a baby Bigfoot that ate a McDonald's hamburger. I mean, come on now. Come on. And, and a lot of people saw the humor in that, trust me. So you played Steve Coles? Uh, no, I just got Steve Coles back. He, he, he was talking crap about me 100%. Some true, some, some not. And uh, uh, if he did not believe me or if he did not want to be associated with me, then he would have never got on that airplane to come and see me. See, when I had Steve Coles on my show, I told him, that I thought you and him had a working relationship, that you both were uh, symbian. I told him that. It's just, just like how I think you and Randy have a working relationship the since, only, you had one with, um, since you had one with Michael Merchant. It makes sense to me. With but, Steve Calls, I, I would have to say yes because... Like, if Steve called, if I posted something, Steve Calls would call me and say, hey, man, you know, could you take that down? If you take this down, I take that down. And, and, and this happened for a while. And that's why you see him attack me some, sometimes and then just disappear and don't attack me at, at, at all. And then he would uh, attack me again. And it was like a cat and mouse game with, with Steve Cole. So I have to agree with that. Uh, but I have no problem with Steve Coles. Uh, I think Steve Coles is a nice guy. Uh, and uh, I have no problem with anyone, anyone at all, but nobody's afraid of me. Nobody is in fear of their life for Rick Dyer. I am the most kindest, gentlest person you will ever meet in your life. Trust me. Steve Coles has written two books, 50 Large and What Would Sasquatch Do? Have you read any of those books? Uh, I have not read the whole book, uh, but I have seen him talking about these books, one with uh, a short guy with a beard. He was on the show. I don't remember his name. And and he was talking about the 2008 hoax and how he supposedly busted it. And you cannot bust something that you're a part of. And 
again, that was a money issue there too. So money brought down the 2008 hopes. Not anybody else. Money did. Rick, you did something um, a while back, and I remember seeing this video, and uh, it hurt somebody a great deal. Who? Uh, Lauren Coleman wrote a book, and you burned it on a grill. Oh, I've burned many books. Why? Why would you do that? Uh, to get attention, and it absolutely positively worked. I, I burned and peed on uh, Dr. Jeff Meldrum's book. And I got a lot of attention. Did you pee uh, on it to put the fire out? Yes, and 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 it actually it, it actually put the put, no no seriously, uh, seriously it, it it did. She must have saw the video because it did put the top the fire out. And uh, uh, again, I don't attack people who don't attack me first. They they attack me first, so I had to respond. And I believe that that was a great way to to respond and to get attention at the same time. Uh, if, did, did you even read the book? Uh, is that the one where he says that Bigfoot is gay? Bigfoot's gay. That's what he says in the book. I'm gonna have to read this book. But I have no problem with Lauren Coleman, uh, and I have no no problem. Oh yeah, I think this is that book. <laughs> and I have no problem with um, with Dr. Jeff Mel Belgium. We we all do things, and we all arrive, but we all arrive at the same spot. We are all on top of the Bigfoot community. He's on top because of a theory. Uh, Lauren Coleman is on top. Because he's a book writer and he owns a museum, um, uh, you're on top because you were in a TV show, and I'm on top because I'm a hoaxer. And but but we're all there on top, and uh, it's it's um, it's just life, and people shouldn't take Bigfoot so seriously. I can see why people think you're a bully for doing that. So I can I can I can't defend you with that. I mean I don't want you to defense. Bitch. <laughs> I don't want Seriously. you to defend. So but I mean it's just it's just I can't be devil's advocate on that. I can't I mean that was not cool. Burning a book in two thousand and eight, that was great. That 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 made that made headlines everywhere. And that made uh, Lauren Coleman get out of his comfort zone and attack me with curse words, and that's something that Lauren Coleman never does. That that is that, that that's great. And I am I am admonishing you for that. Okay. Well, lean, you, okay. Lean close to the camera. I'm serious. Lean close. I'm hitting. You, I am you, hitting you, your okay, nose. Bad dire. Bad dire. Be nice to Lauren. This, okay. this was in 2008. All right. Be nice to Lauren. Be nice to Randy. Oh, no, no. Hold on. No, no, no. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Right now. Right now. You said you were sorry to him while ago. It was time to be nice. Yeah. I said that I was sorry. I'm sorry, Randy. Okay. But check this out. I didn't start a blog on Randy. He started to blog on me. He came after me, but I'm going to be the big, bigger man and say, hey, I'm sorry, bro. I am sorry. I'm sorry for the engagement that we had. And um, like I said before, and I know the show is coming to an end, look, I will be happy to fly Randy wherever he wants to be flown, flown to and whoever he wants to be flown with to a place that, that we can go out and have a real Bigfoot expedition and, and he can see what I'm all about and not the lies he has in his head about me. Um, and uh, uh, I am willing to walk away from the Bigfoot community, hands down walk away. Um, uh, and, and Jesus is my witness, I will walk away and not have anything to do. Richter, I will give you my web website and you can burn it up. I don't care. I put a post up last night. It says, should I leave the Bigfoot community? 
and like four people commented, right? But my phone has been ringing all day from from the people you see on TV. Oh no, that's not a good idea. Uh, no, Rick, just just stay there, change change your ways, but just stay, stay. And and this is, you know, I'm doing it. If y'all don't want to see me, quit quit talking about me, Randy. If you hate me so much, I will take my blogs down. I will have a hangout with you live to work this out. I will do anything, but my life is not wrapped around you, so you shouldn't be wrapped around me. So let's just work it out and be happy, and we we'll laugh about this over a beer one day. Come on now. Russ Mock said, Richter sincerely stated that he forgave the douche nozzle. That may not make you a bad person, but it certainly makes you gullible. All right, well, okay, giving Dyer this chance to speak is why I consider myself the number one Bigfoot webcast. It's not a popularity contest. It's just the topic. I'm not worried about public opinion either. This is all intertwined. It's in the DNA of Bigfooting. Who is a hoaxer? Who isn't? It's what you people are obsessed with at a given time. Last month, you people were obsessed with Dr. Meldrum calling Todd Standing his colleague. Did anyone put Todd Standing or Dr. Meldrum on their Bigfoot show to explain their case? No. Instead, we all tossed mud. Well, it's time to act like grown-ups, you so-called Bigfoot community. All right. Joan Krebs, or Taffy Apple, or whatever her name is this week, said, Some people will dance with the devil for ratings. And she also said they, being me and Tammy, just probably want a chance to interview him on the show. Yes, absolutely. That is why we're the number one Bigfoot webcast. We don't go by what's popular opinion. We give everybody a fair chance to explain themselves. Steve Coles was on. Now we have Rick Dyer. So... To maintain our integrity, or whatever integrity you Bigfoot community people think we might have left after this webcast, Randy Filipovic, the platform is still there for you to come and explain your case. Can you and Rick Dyer find a common ground? Can that happen? Will it happen? I don't know. Todd Standing pretty much left the Bigfoot community. Guess what? There's still trash talk about him. He left. He did us all a favor, right? He did what everybody wanted. He took down his Facebook. You know, I guess he's not hoaxing anymore. I don't know what. Maybe the government shut him down. I don't know. But he's gone right now. He'll probably be back, granted. But he's gone. Okay, so how, how does that make anything different? It doesn't because it's not about hoaxers. And it's not about Bigfoot. What's it about? It's about trash talk. From the comfort of your living room or your mom's basement or your bedroom or your dining room table like I'm sitting at. That's what it's about. This is not about Bigfoot. If you're going to talk about Bigfoot, then talk about Bigfoot. It's filled with possibilities. It's a wonderful mystery. Let's talk about Bigfoot. Let's go out in the woods and look for Bigfoot. Let's go on Bigfoot expeditions. Richter, you and I got to go out in the woods in the Sierras in September. Was that a good time or what? Oh, it was a blast. I had a great time. Going Bigfooting, it, it's just like what Rick Dyer was saying earlier. Going out and talking to people, playing with cool equipment, looking into the woods in the middle of the night, talking about Bigfoot, hearing noises, trying to figure out what they are, hearing tree knocks. All of that stuff is great fun. It's a great, passionate hobby. None of us are going to prove the existence of Bigfoot. Not while we're playing Facebook. Rick, Scout Lee wants to know if you will answer questions on our YouTube channel. If people will comment, will you please respond to them in a professional manner? And that also goes for the Bigfoot community as well. If you make any comments under this, be respectful as much as possible as you can. Take this topic seriously because the Bigfoot community either takes it too far 
or they trivialize it and infantile it. Do not reduce it down to childlike behavior. We're all grown adults. You can check with the Facebook pages I'm on right now. And I'm the, only, I'm the one that's being respectful. And everybody else is attacking me. And I'm being nice. Now, I will defend you on that because I saw whenever you started asking to get into Bigfoot groups, uh, you sent requests to our groups to, to join, the groups that Richter and I admin together, and we accepted. And you didn't do anything. The trash talk didn't come from you. It came from everywhere else, from everyone else. And... Uh, that it was pretty obvious that your mere presence uh, was enough to control everyone's emotions because people, of course, don't have control of themselves. You know, they are, uh, I guess, guided by what they see on their screen. So, um, yeah, I can defend you on that. There was nothing malicious in any of the Facebook groups that Richter and I managed when you joined the groups, and I think you're still in them. Because uh, the rules of the group are don't cause trouble. Don't get into the Facebook groups and, you know, attack each other and fight and bicker, post people's addresses and phone numbers and, and things like that. Just basic, simple rules for a Facebook group. And we've had very little problems in the Facebook groups that we manage. Am I right, Richter? Yeah, we... Tell people be civil with one another. I have to say now I really want to watch the uh, the movie. Okay. I've got to see the uh, movie. Okay. We didn't talk about shooting Bigfoot. Are people able to watch this online right now? Pay for it on Netflix? What? Uh, I, I believe it is coming. If it's not already on Net Netflix, it's coming to Netflix, and also it's coming to on demand. So right now, nobody can watch Shooting Bigfoot? Uh, I, I don't think so, no. Uh, unless they go to... Um, okay. I have no idea. But if you want to watch it, I'll send it to you. Okay, cool. All right, if I finally watch this shit. Yeah. <laughs> and Steve Coles is like, you need to watch it. And Steve Alcorn's like, you need to watch it. I'm like, I don't want to watch that. Joan, get me a Snapple. <laughs> Dude, that is, that is some funny shit, I tell you. And uh, Dallas and Wayne, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. But uh, but they know who's the star of the show. Oh God. I have right. another question for you. Do you uh, do your mohawk yourself? Because that's really sharp. Okay, as a gay yes, man, do. do not do that mohawk. No. Well, Shame. well, coming from a gay man, I think I'm going to keep it. No, you're not going to get gay laid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just want people to know that that if you want to get out and you want to search for Bigfoot and stuff, get you a sponsor. As it's really easy to do. If Rick Dyer can get sponsors since 2008, I'm sure that the legitimate could do the same thing. Like I have my, my sponsor now is Mr. Nice Guys in Denver, Colorado. It's, it's, it's easy to do. Ladies and gentlemen, the past three months in my life has been excellent. And the reason it's been excellent is because I let God back in my life. I'm not a super Christian. So don't, don't, I, I curse. I, I, I do a lot of things I'm not supposed to do. Okay. But I, I, I know what's good and I know what's bad. And I try to swing towards the good parts now. I'm not perfect and I'm still doing it. So if it's okay with you, I would like to uh, end with a prayer. All right. Thank you. Uh, God, please protect everyone in the Bigfoot community. Uh, please protect Michael Merchant with his anger issues. And uh, please protect his sidekick that that cleans his house and and... Please protect them and send them on the right path to you. I know they're atheists, God, but please work with them so they can see the light. Uh, I would like to pray for Randy Filipovic. Randy Filipovic 
I'm sure you're a nice guy deep down, and I'm sure that you're trying to fight for a cause. Um, but it's not going to happen with me. Uh, I, I wish you all the best of luck, and I hope God can get into your heart and, and tell you that uh, Rick Dyer is not your king. Don't live your life around Rick Dyer. And uh, I, I really pray for that. And for everybody in the Bigfoot community, please calm down. Calm down, and if you really believe in Bigfoot, then look for Bigfoot instead of attacking people. And please find it in your heart to allow God in your heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for having me on the show. God, God thanks you, Richter and, and Tammy. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 That was good. I think that was heartfelt, Rick. Yes, yes it was. I think it was. Now yeah. this... Michael Merchant's sidekick, I don't know how God's going to feel about that. <laughs> that yeah, the grand. first part was, 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 was kind of jokingly, but the rest yeah. was... was uh, <laughs> Michael Merchant's not going to like it, I know that. Oh, God. Um, all right, Rick, thanks for coming on, um, presenting your case. Um, um, I don't really care how people are going to react to this. They're going to be typical childish and name calling and hate mongering and calling me a fag do something different for a change and be grown adults that's all I want and that's never gonna happen and hey at the end of the day you can call me whatever you want but you can't call me a hypocrite he's the best I've ever met just because I've accepted Rick Dyer's apology does not mean I'm going to give him access to my checking account he has not harmed me in any way that is irreparable. Now, maybe that can't be said between him and Randy Filipovic, but that's between both men to figure out. Both of these men need to find common ground and grow up and stop fighting and making things personal. And none of this is the Bigfoot community's business. Yet the Bigfoot community, the online Facebook social click, makes it its business. If I could forgive Rick Dyer for being an ass bucket and coming to my work and scaring me, maybe you people can too. And move on. Do something better with your time. I know. Prove Bigfoot's real. Put down the bong and prove me wrong. That's going to be my quote. Actually, my opinion is that the Bigfoot community is eating itself out from within. You have people infiltrating Facebook groups under aliases, gathering information, trolling, doing public smear campaigns, and character assassinations. Meanwhile, hoaxers take advantage of uninformed people outside of the so-called community and get the media's attention. That is what's going on in this precious Bigfoot community that holds itself up so high and so esteemed. It's shit on a platter. Now remember, I'm not talking about the research community. I'm talking about this Facebook Bigfoot Illuminati that all of you are all a part of. Everyone should be ashamed for the hand they have played in regards to Bigfoot Online. From me, to Jeff Kelly, to fucking Michael Merchant and Stacy Brown and Rick Dyer. All our hands are dirty. We've all had a part to play in this. And I'm trying to not be a hypocrite. I'm trying to be a better person. Now, Randy Filipovic said this about his story. It would take an extremely long time to tell everything. I wouldn't even know where to start. When I try to warn people about how bad Dyer really is, people think I'm blowing things out of proportion. Well, Mr. Filipovic, the ball is in your court. This infamous hoaxer, Rick Dyer, the legend, whatever he's calling himself, has now come on my show. And I welcome you the opportunity to present your case. Gather your information, documentation, and join us on After Hours. The Bigfoot community will want to hear what you have to say. Or you can go on some second-rate show like Jeffrey Kelly's The Squatcher's Lounge podcast and present your viewpoints there. As long as it's done in a manner that will be effective and not 
a platform for hate speech. I want professionalism. I want as much journalism as possible. Not hearsay, not tabloid. So, you all have work to do, the Bigfoot community. My advice to those of you watching this interview, I hope your passion and or anger will motivate you to go outside and leave the keyboard behind. Prove that Bigfoot is real. Come back with some serious, definitive evidence that will shame these hoaxers into oblivion. Make a name for yourself, and then maybe you can come on After Hours with Richter, the number one Bigfoot webcast. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe.